As the most hyped up NFL prospect since Andrew Luck, Trevor Lawrence came into his rookie season with extremely high expectations. And after posting some downright terrible numbers, some might call his debut campaign disappointing. Among starting quarterbacks in 2021, Lawrence ranked 30th in completion percentage, dead last in average yards per attempt, dead last in touchdown percentage, and 25th in interception percentage. The numbers were awful, but based on what I saw when I watched all 668 of Lawrence's dropbacks from last season, the difference between the stats and the film is massive. Lawrence was welcomed into the league by arguably the worst supporting cast around any quarterback in the last decade. The offensive line was average at best, the receiving core was abysmal, and to top it all off, his head coach was woefully underprepared for coaching professional athletes. In case you've been living under a rock for the past year, and are unaware of the shockingly hilarious timeline of Urban Meyer's antics as head coach of the Jaguars, I'll attach a link in the description to an article that outlines every event, from signing Tim Tebow as a tight end, to kicking the kicker. As bad as the coaching staff was, the talent gap that Jacksonville faced on a down-to-down -down basis would have been difficult for even the most creative play callers to overcome. When you watch plays like this, where Jaguars right tackle Jawan Taylor takes the concept of a vertical pass set way too literally and completely blows his protection assignment, then Dare Ogunbowale drops an easy touchdown, it's hard not to laugh at the sheer dysfunction of this offense. So often, Lawrence wouldn't have time to execute concepts within structure because the pressure got in before the concept developed downfield. This led Jacksonville to keep one or more eligible receivers in for extra help in pass protection, which, in turn, made it easier for the defense to cover everything up downfield. Here's an example from Week 12 against Atlanta. The route concept here is called 989, which calls for go routes from both outside receivers and a deep over route from the slot. The Falcons are in a Tampa 2, which is a zone coverage concept similar to cover 2, but tells the Mike linebacker to drop deep into the hole between the two deep safeties. If you've watched the channel before, you know that one of the biggest weaknesses in any two deep coverage is the holes on the sideline between the cornerbacks and safeties. The concept that Jacksonville called attacks this weakness too, because both number one receivers will get into the holes on the sidelines. The problem is, the corners aren't held in the flat. Trevor Lawrence had been dealing with pressure all day by this point in the game, so in an effort to help the concept develop before the pressure got in, they kept the tight end Chris Manhurts in to protect. Because there was no immediate threat in the flat, Falcons corner AJ Terrell was able to sync with the vertical route from the number one receiver to the top of your screen, which prevented the hole from ever opening up. If Manhurts had released outside into the flat, Terrell would have been forced to either cover it up, in which case Lawrence could have hit Tavon Austin down the sideline, or if he sank anyway, Lawrence could have hit Manhurts in the flat for a decent gain. Because the corners were able to sync with the the number one receivers, nothing got open post-snap, and Manhurts completely blew his protection assignment which led to a strip sack for the defense. Despite selling out to prevent pressure at the expense of maximizing the downfield route concept, Lawrence was still sacked. This level of talent leads to damned if you do, damned if you don't situations like these, which make it extremely difficult for any quarterback, let alone a rookie, to execute. Now, considering the extreme dysfunction that was going on around Trevor Lawrence, I came away impressed after watching his 2021 tape. In his first few games, Lawrence had this total gunslinger mentality, which is pretty common in rookie quarterbacks. At Clemson, his supporting cast was so good that he could rely heavily on those around him to make plays. When you spend your college career throwing to T. Higgins, Justin Ross, and Amari Rogers, you're not accustomed to watching your receivers get out executed. On top of that, NFL defensive backs are bigger, faster, and smarter than college defensive backs, which requires more advanced quarterback play. Early on last season, Lawrence made some pretty ugly reads, and this play from week one against Houston is a good example. The Texans are in a Tampa 2, similar to the call on the last play, and I want you to pay attention to the smash concept to the bottom of your screen. Lawrence is reading the leverage of the deep half safety aligned to that side of the field. If the safety is late to bite on the corner route, he'll rifle this ball into his receiver on the sideline. He doesn't feel like he needs to worry about the outside corner because Lawrence thinks that he'll be occupied by the running back in the flat. The problem is, NFL DBs operate in zone coverage based on more than just landmarks. Texans corner Vernon Hargraves has enough experience to see this concept coming from a mile away. He sees Lawrence's eyes locked on Jags receiver DJ Chark, and can piece together that Chark is going to break to the boundary, so he doesn't worry about the running back in the flat. It's a low-risk, high-reward situation for Hargraves. If Lawrence does the right thing by checking off and hitting the running back in the flat, the Jaguars aren't likely to gain anything more than a few yards, 
But if Lawrence doesn't check off, Hargraves has the chance to get the ball back for his offense, and that's exactly what happened. When Lawrence was in college, the structure of the route concept alone was often enough to get his receivers open. He didn't have to worry about certain defenders because the concept occupied them for him. If he knew what was coming pre-snap, his post-snap process could often be as simple as locking onto one target and firing in an accurate pass for a big gain. In the NFL, it's almost never that easy. This problem was really on display in Jacksonville's Week 2 game against Denver as well. Here, Lawrence forces one in to DJ Chark deep downfield with his tight end sitting wide open in the flat. There were a ton of plays like these in the first three games of last season, where Lawrence would force the ball deep downfield despite an open receiver underneath. And it really came down to his total disregard for the curl-to-flat defender. Lawrence had a lot of trouble with these defenders early on in his rookie season, but just a few games in, that began to change. By week 5 or 6, this issue was almost completely gone, because Lawrence made massive strides in actually processing the defense post-snap, rather than relying on the concept to do it for him. On this play from week 6 against Miami, Jacksonville called a variation of a concept known as Sal X Dig. On the bottom of your screen, Lawrence has a sale concept, with a backside dig route from the X receiver. Miami showed a two-high safety shell pre-snap, but rolled into a three-deep coverage post-snap, which will require Lawrence to key Dolphins corner Justin Coleman. As he takes the snap, Lawrence reads the free safety's rotation to the deep middle of the field, which tells him that the defense is in cover three. Then he gets his eyes on Coleman, sees that he's sinking with the sale route from Jags tight end Dan Arnold, and hits Marvin Jones in the flat for a small gain. It might not look like much, but plays like these are the foundation that holds an offense together. By midseason last year, Lawrence already demonstrated the ability to consistently take what the defense gave him after struggling to do so in the first few weeks of the season. A change in play style this significant in such a short period of time isn't something you see from rookie quarterbacks very often. And as much as Lawrence has learned to take what the defense is giving him, he hasn't lost that gunslinger mentality that defines his game. There was a play from back in week 4 against Cincinnati where the Bengals showed a zero blitz look pre-snap, meaning that there was no high safety and the line of scrimmage was stacked. In preparation for the heavy blitz, Lawrence made a max protection call by keeping his tight end and running back in to pick it up. Post-snap, the defense only rushed 4 and rolled into a cover 3. That allowed LaVisca Chanel to get wide open down the seam, but Lawrence's pass was inaccurate and fell incomplete. Two weeks later against Miami, he got the same exact look from the defense. They showed cover zero pre-snap, and Jacksonville made the same play call as they did on the last play. The tight end and running back were both kept in to protect in case the defense did bring pressure, both number one receivers ran 10-yard stop routes, and the slot ran a divide route down the seam. This time, Lawrence was prepared for the defense to drop out of this heavy blitz look. He stayed calm with his eyes downfield during his drop back, then delivered a missile down the seam to Jamal Agnew despite being hit as he was thrown. The changes that Lawrence made during his season were mostly positive. He toned down the gunslinging, but at the same time, he didn't lose his confidence. He's already finding a healthy balance between aggressiveness and conservativeness, which is a really good thing to see at this stage in his career. I mean, it was hard not to cringe at some of the hits this dude took after letting go of the ball, and yet he continued to make those throws all season long. By the end of the season, Lawrence was putting some high-level quarterback play on tape. He showed up in Week 18 when Jacksonville spoiled Indianapolis' playoff chances, and this play from the second quarter provides a good illustration of how far he came during his rookie season in terms of processing defenses and executing within structure. Jacksonville called a play-action concept with a corner route from the tight end aligned to the top of your screen, a deep post from the number one receiver on the bottom of the screen, and a seam read from the slot. Pre-snap, the Colts showed a one-high safety shell, but rolled into cover two as the ball was snapped. And as soon as he saw the box safety rotate back to cover the deep half, Lawrence knew exactly where he needed to go to exploit the coverage. Against cover two, with the exception of a blown coverage assignment, the routes from the number one receivers on both sides of the formation here are functionally clear-out routes. Neither are likely to get open, but both can occupy the respective deep half safeties. Post-snap, Lawrence identifies the MOFO, or middle of field open look, which tells him that Marvin Jones can get open down the seam, but he sees that the safety to his left, Kari Willis, is indecisive. So Lawrence shoots his eyes to the corner route, which causes Willis to bite, then he fires one into Jones on target for a big gain. The fact that Lawrence is using his eyes to manipulate defenders at this stage in his career is great, but it's even more encouraging when you consider the context. 
he was really struggling with processing defenses and avoiding turnovers during the first few weeks. Then the bad decisions gradually began to decrease, while the processing improved and only continued to improve as the season went on. Now, on the mental side, Lawrence is still far from where he needs to be to make this offense a legitimate threat in the AFC. He has a bad habit of leaving clean pockets, which is why he ranked third in the league in the rate at which defensive pressure was at least partially on the quarterback, according to PFF. This should improve with upgrades to Jacksonville's offensive line, but it does need to be addressed as Lawrence continues to develop. That said, Lawrence has a lot to build off of in terms of the mental side of his game, which is encouraging considering how many ridiculous throws he made last season. The Jaguars were so dysfunctional and such a bad football team that a lot of these throws have gone unnoticed by people who don't watch them on a weekly basis, which, if you do, please see a therapist. But I can't believe I missed this dime from back in week 4 against Cincinnati or this beautiful broken play from week 18 against Indianapolis. Those are just a couple examples of the many elite throws he made last season. So believe me, the arm talent that we all saw when Lawrence was at Clemson hasn't gone anywhere. With an improved supporting cast and a brand new coaching staff that both has experience winning at the highest stage and is totally invested into Lawrence's development, expect him to turn some heads in 2022. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon and Twitter at the links in the description. Next week, I'll be covering another rookie. Not sure who that's going to be yet, but Kyle Pitts and Pat Sertan are both on the list. But that's all I've got for today, so until next time, peace.